believe it or not, you already know a lot about the pathway that goes from the eye to the brain. So the optic nerve, what is that? That's the axons of our ganglion cells, right? So those are receiving information from the bipolar cells, which are receiving information from the photoreceptors that transduce that light. And you saw this in the sheep brain. You saw this um, ventral view where you can see the optic nerve, the optic chiasm, and then the optic tract that goes into the brain. So this is the part that should look familiar here. This is a human brain too, but it looks pretty similar. So what's cool about vision, well, lots of things are cool about vision, but most inf sensory information crosses to the opposite side of the brain. Motor information going out also crosses. So the left um, side of your brain controls the right side of your body and vice versa. For vision, because we have two eyes, it's actually divided into visual fields instead of left and right eyes. This is called binocular vision. The fact that we have two eyes, binoculars, right? Two oculars. Um, so there's a binocular zone of vision where both eyes are receiving information from that portion of the visual field. That allows us as humans and other um, animals that have this ability to have really good depth perception. So like a horse with his eyes on the side of the head doesn't have as much of a binocular view. So the visual fields of the left and right overlap. The monocular zone is just associated with one eye. And what happens then is the visual field from the information from each eye travels both ipsilaterally and contralaterally. Um, so let's look at what that looks like as we go back into the brain. So you can see here the right visual field is in red. What, it, what is seen by the right visual field hits both eyes, right? Both your eyes are seeing what's on the right half of your visual field. Here is that information coming in here. And then here is that information traveling to the brain. The left, in blue is doing the same. Let's add in the rest of this pathway here. So first let's label these components. You should be able to do this. Label what is this, these, these two things right here. This is your optic nerves, cranial nerve two. What is this right here? This is your optic chiasm where the information crosses. Some of it crosses, some of it doesn't. So each visual field is going to, the information from each eye, some of it's going to cross, some of it is not. So that all the red ends up on one side and all the blue ends up on the other. Let's just label these last things here optic tract, because now we're in the CNS, right? After this point, this is CNS, this is PNS. What is this here? This is the thalamus. How might you know that? You know the thalamus is a sensory gating region. Um, it's a relay station. And when you're sleeping, the light doesn't go to your primary cortex, right? Um, the lateral geniculate nucleus is the specific nucleus in the thalamus where vision is relayed. Beyond this, this is the optic radiation. This back here is your primary visual cortex in the occipital lobe. Right, occipital lobe is the one in back here. That's this, as well as this. So going back to our projection fibers, the red here is either going to not cross 
or from the right eye, it's gonna cross. The left visual field shown in blue hits this side of the eye and is either going to not cross or cross. So now the right side of the brain receives information from the left visual field, the left half of what you're seeing. The right, the left half of the brain gets information from the right visual field because this then provides you with a unified picture of what you're seeing. Um, so basically for visual field, instead of just being right half of the body, it's the actual half of your visual field. Once you're in the primary visual cortex, a lot of processing occurs. We're not gonna go into detail on that. You could take sensation and perception um, where you would probably learn more about this. So this is our primary visual cortex within the occipital lobe, visual cortex. And there are different, a lot of processing. We are very visual creatures, humans and most primates. So you have a whole stream of information that goes on to tell you about where is it? So motion sensitivity, you've got a whole stream of information that tells you what is it? So details of color and defining what it is. So we're not gonna go more into that, but there's a whole lot more steps needed to process visual information. Additionally, I just can't help it. I've got to tell you a little bit about not only is it the biology that matters, it's also context. So our perception of what we see is not just influenced by sensation, the literal information coming in, but also by prior experience, um, emotions, all kinds of other things. So in this case, this is actually an illusion called the checker shadow illusion. This cylinder here is drawn to appear like it's casting a shadow in this region here, right? See that shadow? So our brains assume that A is darker than B because B must be lighter because there's a shadow being cast on it. Our brain is adjusting for its assumption about the shadow being cast. In reality, these are the same darkness. Um, and this is a trick that's used by artists to cast the illusion of shadows and all kinds of other things that artists can do. So here, if you don't believe me, here is the same picture on the left that you saw before. Here is if you take the same color gray and make a strip through it where you can see A and B are the same color. This is called color constancy. So what this is, is our visual systems are not like a physical light meter. We're really bad at distinguishing absolute quantity of things like light. Um, our, instead, our brains assuming things about context. So um, we're, it, it's tricks about how this art is done to make our brains think that there's a shadow there. When really it's just a, two, this is a two dimensional picture, right? But it looks like a three dimensional thing. Um, it looks 3D. So pretty cool. The other example that you may have seen of this is this. What color is this dress? I hope that this isn't too old for you guys now. Um, <laughs> this was a big in the media several years ago where people didn't, couldn't agree what this dress, what colors it were, what colors it was. So I personally see gold and white, no matter what light you change it for me. Um, other people see blue and black. And you can do some online um, visual things where it changes the lighting in the background that the shining onto the stress. So it turns out different people make different assumptions about what light this stress is in. And depending on your assumptions that your brain automatically makes, you see the colors differently. Super cool. Um, so you can do more about that if you want to do extra credit related to this kind of sensation and perception, visual illusion things. I've got one posted. Otherwise, just a teaser.